Yesterday's game, tactically, it was quite interesting, actually, even from our point of view. I know you came up against Ireland in the World Cup qualifiers, but the, for our, from our point of view, the Cyrus Christie positioning um, in midfield was a surprise. What did you make of that? Did that, did that surprise you as well? I think, I, yeah, it did. Uh, surprisingly, Ireland came very low and deep with the defence, you know, and... Uh, but I think he put uh, Christie over on that side because he, he needed quicker feeds against mm -hmm. Pione Sisto. Uh, Sisto was really good in the, in the last in the qualifier uh, for the World Cup. And, and uh, I think uh, Christie made a difference. So you have at least two fullbacks on that side you know, to, to handle Pione, Christo, uh, Pione Sisto. And, and that, that's why I think that's why Christie played in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously you were missing Christian Eriksen, which was a huge loss. He scored a hat-trick here in Dublin in uh, November of last year. Um, tactically, what did you have to change to accommodate some of the other players that had to be brought into the squad? No, it's, uh, we played in the same same way as we always do, but we just put another man in Christian's role. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's there's only one Christian Eriksen. And, uh, and I think the, the team did OK. We, uh, we had our chances and uh, it was hard to break down Ireland. They, they defended well and, and uh, they always do. And, uh, and uh, we're away from home, picking up one point and, and uh, we're still leading the group, you know, and we have Ireland at home. So I think it's we, we're in a good position. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, we're a threaded set pieces. I think that's always been one of our strongest, our strongest suits. But in terms of stopping us in open play, um, do you find pressing Ireland is a way of kind of getting at us? Because the perception in this country is we don't pass out from the back very, very well. So um, how do you approach that? No, I think the, the ball possession shows a lot, you know, for uh, how the game was uh, in, in open play. Uh, Ireland uh, normally kick long. Uh, they have good headers, uh, good, they're good one to one in the air. Uh, they're good on set pieces, and there's always the danger the ball can fall down, you know, and, and, and something can happen. Um, but it, it's um, from our po point of view, it's we, we went to Ireland to try to press them high and try to stop them from playing, even though we knew that they will kick long. Mm -hmm. But but. Um, I think it's it's not our style to, to sit back and defend. You know, we have um, we are defended well as a team, uh, even if we try to keep the ball and attack the player, the opposition. We only conceded two goals in in 2018. So so we've been through a World Cup. So that shows uh, that we have the the capacity to to defend. Uh, they always the difficult part in football is to uh, create something offensively, and especially when people defend well and uh, keep a lot of people behind the ball. It's uh, needed even a little bit more than we managed yesterday. Yeah. A couple of last questions as well. Obviously, maybe starting on Martin O'Neill, who was your former teammate at Manchester City and Norwich um, as well. Am I right? He used to be your landlord or something as well? Yeah, yeah. I rented a house on Martin, you know, and uh, we played together at Man City and, and uh, Norwich. Uh, we both went back to Norwich. and Martin is... Uh, He's a, he's a friend of mine, and he's uh, he's been coaching, uh, managing teams, you know, for a long, long period, and a very experienced manager. Had a great spell at Leicester and and, uh, and Celtic, also in international level. So good results there, you know. He done he done marvelous with Ireland. They they were in the quarter final in the European Championship. But it's like this football is uh, small margins, you know. Sometimes you you succeed, sometimes you 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 fail, and. But all over, he's, he's done fantastic with the island and, and the teams he has managed. And a good landlord? A very good landlord. <laughs> and a final question, just um, just on the system in Denmark, actually, I've just looked at some, a lot of the players in your squad came through uh, Micheland. And uh, obviously, as a club, it's good to have the likes of Bromby and Copenhagen producing players as well. But Michelin seem to be have been doing the right thing over the last few years. Um, what is it, from your point of view, that they're doing that's actually bringing through a lot of players in your in the uh, in Denmark? I think it's the, the youth policy, the way of way of training and the organisation. I think that's very good in Denmark. Uh, in, in all the top clubs like Brøndby, Copenhagen, and Midtjylland, they are very also very good with the young players and uh, create young players, find them, uh, develop them, educate them, and finally uh, source them through into the to the first team. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much. Thank, thank you. you.